Ain't you going to bed, Miss Anne? The girl turned from the barred window of the lean-to which housed the bedroom of the tavern's owners. No. Her gray eyes fastened broodingly on Faith Parker, scrawny and grotesque in a long flannel nightgown buttoned to her leathery neck. No sleep for me tonight. Miss Anne, there was protest in the woman's cracked tones. You've got to stop these things you're doing. That man is bound to catch you. I seen the woman's prison at Weatherby once. It was... it was... A shudder completed her meeting. I've seen that prison too, Faith. The girl's voice was flat, intonationless. But I've seen other things. The hovels in Slum Hollow, where not only the women and men, but the little children exist in filth and degradation worth the, worse than the Weatherby ever knew. Starving little children... Faith, hungry for the food and a chance to make something of themselves. And I've seen the mansions on East Drive, where the John Lawtons of Laneville eat cake and drink wine purchased with the stolen money that was meant to buy bread and milk for the children of Slum Hollow. I can't stop. She choked on a sob. I can't. God help you, my dear, the age woman clicked off the light to help hide the luster of tears in her own eyes. God won't help me, a wistful voice whispered in the dark. God won't help a thief. The tavern on Bolton Highway held more secrets still than hidden microphones and spying mirrors. In the murk of the bedroom, whose only apparent exit was a door into the kitchen, there was a soft, soft rasp of wood on wood. A narrow band of blacker black showed the unlighted floor. It widened. An earthy odor breathed into the room. Light footfalls tapped stealthily as if on a ladder. The, fo the floor was unbroken once more, and Faith Parker stared achingly into otherwise untenanted darkness, an unshaded bulb filled with garish light, a windowless subterranean chamber. Anne Marsh stepped down off the ladder, went across to a time-darkened workbench that bulked large at the room's center. The girl's hands were deft, purposeful, clearing the bench's scarred top of litter of tools, wood shavings, wire coils, and bits of twisted metal. She was alone, but it seemed to her that another presence was beside her. She could almost see him, the kindly-eyed, gray-haired man who had taught her all she knew of the manual craft, the man whose obituary in the Laneville Courier had ended with the words that still seared her memory. As long as the naked are unclothed, they ran, and the hungry unfed, the soul of Webster March will have no peace. That comes from The Complete Cases of Anne Marsh, by Arthur Leo Zagat. Uh, this was a series of stories that was intentionally planned as eight different issues. Uh, there was eight issues of uh, Dime Detective Magazine that uh, these stories appeared in. And it has the covers of all of them on the back there. Uh, it deals with Anne Marsh who is a young socialite whose father commits suicide after being blamed for stealing all the money in this town that, that was raised through a, some kind of town function. And he was charged with stealing the money, even though he didn't do it. And he ended up committing suicide because of the shame. And she finds this out when she comes home from from school, I believe. Uh, she's, she's a young woman. Uh, anyway, so she finds this out and she immediately decides she has to figure out what really happened. So she begins investigating uh, the different things that went into the, where this money went and she finds out that the town was full of all these people who are supposed to be pillars of the town. And she finds out that they are all responsible for taking the money and they blamed it on her father. Now I'm not giving anything away reading this. This all comes very early in the story. Uh, so the, all the stories are of her getting her revenge essentially on these people and stealing the money back so that it goes where it's supposed to go to the needy. And she's kind of a Robin Hood figure, and she's stealing what the rich stole and returning it to the poor. And uh, she's a really well thought out character, 
which is really unusual for the time because uh, women just usually were not the main character of a story uh, in the pulps. Uh, it happened occasionally, but usually for not very long, and maybe a story or two, or an often every once in a while there'd be just a one-off that would have a woman as, an, as a main character. But this one was actually planned to have her as the main character, and it was set to be an eight-part series that uh, where you saw her go from being a clueless socialite to getting her revenge on the people that caused the death of her father. Uh, she has the help of a man in it because, of course, there always has to be a man given that it's pulp. And so she does get out of some situations that she's in thanks to the help of this mysterious man. And um, she gets to know who he is over the course of the series. And, uh, but it is mainly about her. And the things that she does are really clever. The way she steals this money back and the things that she does are all really clever, really nice plots. Uh, you know, your typical pulp stories, uh, but not really your typical pulp stories. Uh, I, I don't know how it can be both those things, but it is. Uh, you get what you expect out of a pulp story, but you're also getting something unusual because it's about a woman, Anne Marsh. Uh, and she's a really well thought out character. And she, she does have a few of the uh, hang ups that some, that the women characters in pulps have. She, you know, is, she, she's not immune to crying or, you know, choking back a sob every once in a while when something doesn't go her way. Uh, but on the whole, uh, Arthur Zagat does a really good job of making her her own character and, uh, having everything work out in a really interesting manner. Excellent pulp stories. Uh, if you are into pulp, you'll definitely want to read these. If you've never read pulp before, these are a good place to start. Uh, you get eight stories, complete stories. They were all from Dime Detective, which was second only to Black Mask in terms of popularity. Uh, but I've found that I really like a lot of the Dime Detective stuff even better than the Black Mass stuff. And they have lots of these uh, series from uh, the Dime Detective uh, series uh, that you can get. Uh, I've got a lot of them. Uh, I'll probably go over more of them in the future. Uh, but this one's really good. I really enjoyed every story. Uh, you've got, you know, corrupt politicians, corrupt policemen, all the good stuff that you find in pulp stories, and you've got someone fighting against the odds to do the right thing and trying to get ahead in a world where women are not looked upon as anything other than housewives or damsels in distress. And in this case, uh, she runs the show in terms of the stories. So it's a really good place to start if you've not read Pulp. Uh, even though it is unusual because you'll find that you like the stories about a woman as a main character, but uh, you won't find many other stories about women as main characters. I do have an anthology about female detectives that has some stories in it. It has a, quite a few stories that are, that are female detectives. I might go over that in a future video. Uh, I've read some of those, and, and they're really good, too. Uh, but this one is the complete Anne Marsh. And uh, like I said, it's got all eight stories in it. 
and uh, it's a really excellent book. I highly recommend it. And thank you for hanging out with me this week, and I will see you again next week.